So as requested, somebody wanted me to do a video showing my plugin chain on vocals for uh, using Just Studio One plugins. Uh, so here it is. So I'm going to show you the reason why I process vocals in this order. Um, I typically EQ first, and then the on the second insert I've got a multiband compressor and. The reason I have a multiband compressor is because I'm not a fan of the way that that uh, Studio One does DSing as far as the plug-in. Um, for DSing, you have under the compressor you've got a preset for DSer, which is really a compressor with uh, the low end cut, so it's compressing just the high frequencies, which all a DSer does is uh, compress just the high frequencies if you set it for that. Uh, I can do the same thing with a multiband compressor. I've set it to just compress just the range that I want where the S's are. Once I EQ and uh, DS, then I compress. And after compression, I've got another EQ. And I'll show you in a minute uh, what I do with the second EQ. Uh, let's get back to the track real quick. Uh, this is a song that I recorded in Logic back in 2004 uh, with the artist name uh, P. Nice and Just Money. So with the effects chain I have here, I'm going to take it off, let you hear just the raw vocal, then I'm going to add the processing that I did to it. I'm a Mac and I'll always be the same You never see me and be like damn these chains But you can see me shotgun in the key Or the avalanche 24s winged out with forest green paint But you know you never catch me at the bank I'm from the hood so you know I keep my money in the safe Whether shoot box or hidden compartments I scream beat a mouth for the south like Jimmy Hart is Okay, so let's take you through what I did uh, first with the vocal chain here, or with the with the insert chain, effects chain, you can store it. And you see I've got one vocal chain here, which is uh, these four plugins that I've saved. So if I went to another track, let's say this one for example, and I wanted to use the same order of plugins, select vocal chain, and there it is. And all you do is, if you go to, uh, once you get it set, let's say I want to reorder it or whatever, go to store, effects chain, name it, and then it'll show up here where you can uh, select it. So, back to the vocal. So, the first thing I do is EQ. Well, I rolled off some lows, uh, added a little bit of low end, um, cut a little bit of mids, got another little boost here and then I added some high end uh, with the com with the compressor I've got a 4 to 1 ratio uh, 8 millisecond attack 120 millisecond release the last EQ I have here with compression compression can uh, sometimes kill your high frequencies on a source so a lot of times what I do is I'll first EQ and get it the way I want it sounding EQ wise and then a lot of times I will copy this settings go to the second one paste them and what I do on this one is remove everything uh, except for the high end and then go back to the first one and take out the high end and I would compare those two and listen to them because if adding adding too much high end or adding too much of any frequency really on a source will cause the compression to react more to that source um, it could be a little dangerous boosting lows here because uh, adding low end the compressor is going to see that low end first and react off that before the high end so I like to compare these two uh, take the high frequency off my first compressor or I'm sorry, off my first EQ, add it to the last one, and just go back and forth and see how that sounds to see the difference between adding my high end after the compression or having the high end before the compression. Now, a lot of people 
uh, go back and forth with do you EQ first or compress first. Um, the reason I do it this way is with my first uh, EQ, I like to uh, mostly I use as a corrective EQ cutting frequencies that I don't want um, or removing the low end as I've got the low end rolling off here uh, before it hits my compressor because I don't want the compressor to compress bad frequencies or uh, frequencies that I don't want. So because of that reason, I do all my uh, cuts uh, before the compressor and then after the compressor, I will do boosts or um, in this case, I've uh, got a couple boosts going and you now with this, I'm fine with how this is sounding, how the compressor is reacting to it. Um, you know, in all, it really doesn't matter how you do it. It you know it matters if it sounds good or not. But um, I, I uh, mostly cut first, uh, compress, and then boost if I need to. But um, I'm gonna go through the go through this vocal, and I'm gonna add each effect in one by one, uh, just so you can hear how each uh, plug-in in the chain is affecting the vocal. I'm a Mac and I always be the same. You never see me and be like, damn, he's changed. But you can see me shotgun in the key. Or the Avalanche 24s, Wayne Devil Fours, green paint. But you know you never catch me at the bank. I'm from the hood, so you know I keep my money in the safe. Whether shoot box or hidden compartments. I screw up, beat a mouth for the South like Jimmy Hart is reckless or vandalist. Okay, so let me point out a few things. With the EQ, the you can hear that uh, when I'm adding EQ in, uh, it is adding, um, uh, removing the mids there added a little bit of clarity and also uh, this this um, this mid high boost that I did as well. It adds a little bit of clarity. Uh, you said I don't have a whole lot of EQ going on here. Uh, the better a, a vocal is recorded, the less EQ uh, that you'll have to do. Uh, with the compressor, uh, one thing I want to point out with the compressor is, of course, you know the most general use for a compressor is we want to bring down the bring down the loud parts and bring up the soft parts. And I'm going to show you a great example of where this compressor is doing that at uh, at the beginning of the verse, where you have um, let's listen to it again. I'm a Mac and I always be the same. You never see me and be like, damn, he's changed. But you can see me shot. Okay, the second you can see me, um, watch how the compressor pulls that up. I'm going to take the compressor out and listen to how quiet that part gets the second um, you can see me. I'm a Mac and I always be the same. You never see me and be like, damn, he's changed. But you can see me shotgun in the key. So you can hear on that uh, that last you can see me shotgun in the key, it it drops off a little bit. Listen to it one more time. I'm a Mac and I always be the same. You never see me and be like, damn, he's changed. But you can see me shotgun in the key. Now watch how it, how it becomes more audible once the compressor's in. I'm a Mac and I always be the same. You never see me and be like, damn, he's changed. But you can see me shotgun in the key. So as you can see, uh, you can hear it more now, and that comp the, what the compressor is doing is what I want it to do, is smoothing out the vocal. It's bringing down some of the, the high parts, and it's bringing up the low parts, uh, smoothing out the vocal, making it more more level and more clear. But uh, yeah, there's my my chain and plugins. Uh, that's how I would do it if I was using just Studio One plugins. Um, if I wanted to add some, if I wanted to add anything else like um, red light district uh, sometimes I'll use on vocals just to add a little bit of grit if I needed to and, and blend that in it's got a mix control knob on it um, as well as the saturation knob is good too uh, for helping vocals but just as a, a basic vocal chain um, here it is for me EQ DS uh, compress and then you know sometimes I boost on the end um, sometimes I'll have a um, if I really need to push the vocal I may have a limiter uh, on the end of the vocal chain and another thing I'd like to point out that you can do uh, what I would do uh, this multiband compressor probably just rename that to de-esser 
just so I know what it's doing in the vocal chain. All right, um, that's it. You know, if you want to see me do any videos, uh, like I said, email me at um, at czar at audiozar.net. Um, you could also uh, leave a comment on the video and let me know. I prefer you email me because, um, like I said in a previous video, it's hard to uh, get to YouTube comments from the app or mobile. But yeah, my email's with me all day. But uh, here you go. Catch y'all next time.